Good morning and welcome to prayer and devotion. Today is, <laughs> it was a long weekend. Today is Monday, June 5th, and it is so good to be with all of you. Starting off today, that was Heal Us Emmanuel off of Mark Miller's and the New Haven Collective, Imagine the People of God. And that was Julian Womble singing Heal Us Emmanuel. I was just watching Julian uh, and the praise team that led our annual conference. They were leading the New York annual conference where uh, my good friend Bishop uh, Hector Burgos is the new bishop. So what a blessing to see them uh, singing and leading worship up there. But it is good to be with you this morning. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at Proverbs, specifically Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. So Proverbs 3, verses 5 through 8. And we're going to be talking about the importance of taking care of yourself, taking care of yourself. So it is good to be with you all. Uh, it was a wonderful uh, worship and celebration yesterday. I think I'm still a little tired from it, but it's <laughs> it's good to be with you this morning. So let me welcome you. Good morning, Barbara and Yolette. It's good to be with you, praying for both of you. It was so wonderful to see you in person yesterday, Yo Yolette, to see you back home with us. So welcome. Good morning, Gail and Donna. I'm glad you're here today, praying for both of you. And Daniel and Lisa, it's good to have you here. 
holding you both in prayer this morning. Good morning, Sheila and Augusta. I'm glad you're with us today, praying for both of you. And Renetta and Michelle, I'm glad you're here today as well, <laughs> after a long day yesterday, <laughs> praying for both of you. Good morning, Sue and Vinette. Welcome, praying for you this day. And Labake and Blanca, welcome home from your transatlantic cruise. It's good to have you back home, praying for you, Blanca, as well as, as Labake. Good morning, Susan and Macon. I'm glad you're with us as well, holding you in prayer and holding all of you in prayer as we begin this day together. Um, so today we're going to look at Proverbs 3, beginning in verse 5. As you are opening up your Bibles and turning there, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I'm blessed to serve at the pa as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And it is good to start the day off with all of you. Start the week off with all of you. So welcome. Let's take a look at scripture. Um, Proverbs 3, beginning in verse 5, tells us this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. So today's devotion comes from uh, Joyce Meyer's Strength for Each Day. And today's devotion is entitled, Take Care of Yourself. Take Care of Yourself. She writes, God wants us to be healthy and energetic, but we forfeit good health if we don't take care of ourselves. We live in times of stress and pressure, and that is not likely to change. So we must make good decisions about how we should live and manage the time that God has given us. If we pressure ourselves to do what everyone wants us to do, sooner or later, our bodies will break down under the strain. And we may find that we have made ourselves sick while keeping others happy. We all need to use wisdom and live balanced lives in which we work, rest, play, and worship. If we follow God's wisdom, it will promote healing and good health for us. But if we are foolish, we will pay the price for it eventually. Taking time to care for yourself, to rest and enjoy the fruits of your labor and do things that refresh you is not selfish, but wise. Taking care of yourself will bring you great benefits in the future. So, um, I'm not sure if I've talked about it. I probably have, although maybe not because I didn't do a lot of devotions uh, when I when I came out of the hospital. Um, I mean, I didn't lead a lot of the prayer and devotion, but I, I was reading a book entitled Real Self-Care. And um, one of the things that uh, when, when we sit as a board of ordained ministry, we notice that a lot of the pastors that come before the board are really bad at self-care. They And I'm, I'm not saying that I'm great, great at it because I'm not, but uh, they 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 are so busy doing, doing, doing that they don't take it any of the time. They don't take their Sabbath as well. And, and so we often will say, you know, it's really important. It's re for your own health to take care of yourself, to take time to rest, to take time to refresh. Um, and so I've always thought about self-care and the importance of it. But I have this image of self-care as, oh, you know, taking your Sabbath, being still, those are all great things. 
But this book that I've been reading called Real Self-Care talks about two things that I think are really important in uh, living more faithfully. And they, there are three things in that. Honestly, I cannot remember the third, so I gotta go back to the book. But the two things that stick in my mind are setting good boundaries, having good boundaries, knowing when to say no. Now we can't always say no, sometimes we have to say yes, but some knowing knowing what are the things that no that that is not where God has called me to be. This is not not a place where I'm called to serve, knowing where to set good and healthy boundaries around our time, around the important things like being with family, uh, saying, uh, uh, setting good boundaries, making sure we have enough time to worship, to to be in, to set aside time for for study, um, but setting good boundaries around those times. And the other thing that this book talked about was how we talk to ourselves, um, being intentional in affirming who God created us to be, watching. Uh, uh, acknowledging that sometimes we do not treat ourselves very well. The self-talk uh, that goes on, and I know I talk about this a lot, we have to be really intentional in the ways that not only we talk to others, but the ways that we talk to ourselves. These are core, and they are faith-based. Um, God isn't calling you to do everything. And so it takes, it's important for us to evaluate, are the things that I am doing right now life-giving? Now there's certain things that we have to do because we've got to provide for our families, but there are some things that we do that are not life-giving. They are not, um, they are not helpful to our own physical bodies, nor are they good to the people around us. And so looking really um, intentionally at our lives. And then coming back to the core, when Jesus was baptized, the spirit came down upon it and him and said, this is my beloved son. That, let that be the voice. I am God's beloved. I am a beloved child of God. That internal dialogue should be something that runs through our lives. And so I encourage you today to keep watch over those two things, to begin to look at the boundaries uh, that maybe you haven't set, that maybe it would be important to begin to look at. Where are the ways that I am living and serving? Where are the ways that maybe aren't life-giving and I need to lay them down because sometimes we do and how am I talking to myself how <laughs> and and that like there's two different persons there's just one uh, what is what is the internal dialogue that needs to be reframed in a way that's life-giving these two things will literally change our physical health and will make everything better but if we continue to allow toxic, toxic um, situations, we continue to listen to toxic inner dialogue, it will do harm to our bodies. And so how can we live in ways that will bring um, healing to our flesh, going back to Proverbs, and refreshment to our bones? How can we live in ways that will bring healing to our flesh and refreshment to our bones? Let us pray. <sighs> Heal us, Emmanuel. Heal us, God, with us. God who is the breath within our very bodies. Heal us this day, Lord. Remind us of your desire for our, our lives, 
for the wholeness that comes in balance. Lord, we lift up the places that are no longer giving life and we lay them down. Guide us this day that we will make good choices of how we use our time and our talents, our energy. Lead us, Lord, in paths that are life-giving, not only for ourselves, but for those around us. Lead us to pools of refreshment that we may take time to pause and be still, knowing that in the stillness, Lord, you are there. Help us, Lord, to speak words of kindness and compassion, not only to our neighbor, but to ourselves. Lead us, Lord, that we might live full and healthy lives that your very goodness would heal our, fle our flesh and bring refreshment to our bones that all the dry and weary places might be reborn renewed in the hope and the promise that you offer us this very day. We thank you, Lord, for loving us. Help us, Lord, to love ourselves and our neighbor as you have loved us. We ask all of this in your name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It was so good to be with all of you this morning, um, praying that the day ahead will be filled with God's renewing spirit in your lives. Uh, at 10 o'clock today um, is Coffee with the Pastor, which I forgot to announce, but if anyone would like to join me over at Somerset Diner, I will be there hoping to find a ride because at this point I don't have a car, but I will get a car. Um, so uh, looking forward to seeing some of you today at 10 a.m. Have a very blessed day. God loves you, my friends, and so do I. I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.